Guys, coming to you today, a uh, brief video on low back health and an often overlooked muscle and dysfunction that can be correlated with not only just low back pain, but individuals who have knee pain, lateral knee pain, IT band syndrome, okay, classic runner's knee, uh, even foot and ankle issues as well. Hip, tendonitis, bursitis, uh, just as a short list. And that muscle is the quadratus lumborum. Oftentimes, with the exercises uh, that we do from an abdominal standpoint, we might be targeting this muscle inefficiently or very effectively. Uh, a great way to test how well the muscle is working, but also develop proper function of it while sparing the lumbar spine and the hips in maximizing muscle efficiency is uh, some research that's come from Dr. Stuart McGill, world's foremost expert on spinal biomechanics, has outlined a test for that. And simply put, from a sideline position, you would get into a plank, where with your top leg in front, and simply driving the elbow down, we want to create a lift here, so that our spine's nice and straight and our shoulders and hips can get stacked. From there, we're gonna hold that plank position. Okay, we wanna hold a nice spinal alignment. Again, shoulders and hips are stacked. Now, ideally, if we were to test the right side and the left side, there wouldn't be a large discrepancy, okay? Ideally, most people should be able to hold this for a minute per side. Uh, ballpark, wanna be able to see about at least 40, 45 seconds in my opinion, side to side. Now, if someone's able to hold, say, one side for a minute, even a minute and a half, and then the other side is closer to 30 seconds, that's a huge asymmetry and that's typically correlated with either chronic back pain or increased incident of some of those conditions that I mentioned earlier. So how do we improve the function of the quadratus laborum and therefore improving how the spine and the hips work together for stability purposes? As we look from an athletic standpoint, the quadratus laborum is involved in frontal plane stability, meaning any lateral movement that we perform or if we're in a single leg posture, okay? So of course this gets into ground-based locomotives like your uh, running, you're sprinting, jumping, landing, and so forth, but also it's gonna play a role in exercises such as lunges, step ups, um, even everyday things like up and down stairs are gonna play a role or challenge the frontal plane stability of the hip, and therefore the quadratus lumborum is gonna to have to be taxed and challenged as well. It's gonna be up to the challenger, it's not. So, the great thing about the test for the QL is it becomes the exercise as well. We can peel it back um, and use a leg stack position where now, now the knees are bent, stacked on top of one another rather than straight out. And from this position, we're simply gonna hinge upward, coming onto the knees and the hips come forward. Again, to make sure that we're utilizing the shoulder appropriately and we have the, the lat working. The lat becomes a very important muscle for shoulder health and centrating and stabilizing the shoulder. It's a huge muscle that everybody knows is on the back and as, as equally important to the shoulder as it is the back. So here, if we drive the elbow and forearm into the ground to create a lift for the spine, we're gonna get better lat, lat activation and we're gonna create better spinal and hip alignment for improved quadratus lumborum function and firing in this position. So once we've established firm elbow, pressing down, lift the shoulders, we're gonna come up from the hips and we can hold this in an isometric fashion. One thing to be mindful of here is don't let the knee drift up. You wanna keep it stacked on top of the bottom knee. Now from there, we can progress outward to the uh, full plank position, legs extended. Again, you want the top leg in front of the bottom leg, not here, here. This is something that Professor McGill has established, and this is gonna allow for better hip 
spinal alignment, and the better fire, the quadratus laborum. From there, you can do different variations of the plank, be it a plank roll, isometrics, up-downs. Uh, to turn this into a little bit more of a functionally dynamic exercise, this is where if we get into some loads, uh, such as carrying a kettlebell in a unilateral fashion, such as a suitcase carry, unilateral farmer carry, it can be done one side then the next, obviously in a walking fashion, because the weight wants to pull me, in this case, down to my right, I have to use my left quadratus lumborum to hold me in a proper position, keep my shoulders and my hips stacked. We can also do a rack position carry. You can go into the overhead position as well and carry from there. Uh, honestly, another great exercise variation is utilizing the same principle with lunges, even squats. So you could hold the kettlebell in one side, perform a lunge. You can hold it in the rack position and perform a squat. You can also perform deadlifts, uh, more so in what they would call a suitcase deadlift. If this, this is a barbell, a kettlebell, a dumbbell, typically if you're going to perform from a, de a deadlift position, you might want to take advantage of a barbell and plates. Elevated position may just enable you to keep a better hip and spinal alignment, but you would simply go down and pick. That unilateral weight challenge is going to create not only more efficiency through this, the, uh, the, the spine and hips with the QL, but also the what is known as your oblique sling, how your obliques, how your glutes, and even your lat have to work together to keep the spine and the hips stabilized. So hope this was a helpful video. Uh, again, anybody that's dealing with stuff related to uh, running, athletics, fitness, it could be a great uh, change of pace for you to integrate some quadratus laborum activities. And of course, for those of you that just simply like to pick stuff up and then put it down, this stuff may help with that.